Coming April 2004, Nickelodeon's new action hero is going, going, go. Danny Phantom. When I was in middle school, I stumbled across this show by accident. I thought the promos were a bit scary as a kid, but actually watching it when I got home, I was proven wrong immediately. But now, I'm an adult, and a lot more things stand out to me. Mainly, was Danny accidentally written as a trans boy? Follow along with me as we explore the many different ways I feel like Danny was trans. This is going to be a general critique, not too deep, and you can always take this analysis with a grain of ectoplasm. I'm not asserting this is 100% true, so if you're rearing up to tell me off, put down your pitchforks. You're watching Cartoon Gay Posting. Danny Phantom, or as I call it, Baby's First Goth Show, had the overall vibe of Spider-Man, but, well, with parents that are alive. It's like someone said, what if Peter Parker had a loving, overbearing family on his butt 80% of the time, and even worse, interpersonal skills? It had the potential to become the next Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but they left all that money on the table. The merchandising was lacking, and they siphoned it off to other shows. I would have killed to have one of those Jack Fenton action figures. Uh, take that! Uh, nobody makes a meat puppet out of Jack Fenton! But the main thing I keep coming back to, despite everything, is that he just raises trans. Which is wild because Butch Hartman is known to be transphobic and homophobic, and for some reason he can't help but slip in a gay joke. But first... <laughs> Boys hugging makes every yearbook funny. For someone who isn't gay, he sure thinks about us a lot. <coughs> Boozy and JK Rowling call, they want their shtick back. The concept of a secret life isn't new. But something about living two lives really does resonate with a lot of trans kids, and I know that's how I was. And usually that's for your own safety. Like, when his dad says he's going to rip a ghost apart molecule by molecule. It would have been a good chance to try out the portable Fenton ghost peeler. It peels ghosts apart, atom by atom. So I'm gonna tear that ghost kid apart in a million different- I related to that heavily. When your parents say, like, phobic things, but later on will complain about how you didn't trust them enough to come out? Well, folks, you said you were going to murder me. I don't see how that made me safe enough to reveal anything. Get your hands off our duly elected leader, you odd manifestation of ectoplasmic energy and post-human consciousness! In Season 1, Episode 7, Maddie Fenton says something that really irritates me. She's a smart woman, but adults really forget what it's like to go through puberty. Especially if it feels like you're going through the wrong puberty. It sucks big time. She says, There's nothing you're going through that your father and I didn't go through when we were your age. Yeah? Well, I beg to differ. Well, Danny is a ghost, and he's going to have a harder time navigating all this than you, regular human woman. And... They don't see it because he can't come out because he feels unsafe. He also has this thing about his chest, too. Like, in Season 1, Episode 6. Hey, get away! Like, I've hung out with a lot of cis guys, and that atypical response had me very attacked. Like, even when I wear my binder, I'm hyper aware of people reaching towards my chest. In Season 2, Episode 6, Identity Crisis. I've never seen this so well illustrated. Danny literally splits himself into two just to have some fun once in a while. His human half turns into a massive bro type, totally overcompensating, while his ghost half embodies the epitome of all superhero tropes possible. And sometimes this is how it feels like when you're in the closet. You're performing to hell and back, fitting in two lives and exhausting yourself in the process. And, of course, as we know, bullies love to pick on the trans kid. Dash really knows how to emasculate someone. He constantly bullies Danny about his masculinity. I never really see him doing that to Tucker. He just calls him a nerd. But Danny, he goes, Hey, hey Fentina! And other insults. The one episode where he was fighting with the nerd kid who was bullied, he fell into a bunch of lipstick and makeup and even a dress, and everyone was laughing and pointing at him, and I felt that. 
I do have to point out there was one time in season one, episode four, where Danny goes, Whoa, I, I just got my hair the way I like it on my head. And I went, what a trans mask mood. And I'm way too young to shave. Haven't started HRT yet, huh, Danny? Especially since they don't really prescribe HRT to kids. Uh, he's only 14, and most likely Danny would be on puberty blockers, if anything, just so he, quote, doesn't change his mind, you know? But normally you would, like, start doing HRT at 18. So, for a bit, I really want to talk about allies. Can we have a shout-out from Mr. Lancer for being so overtly gay-coded in the series? Casper! Hi! Spirit! He's one of the few teachers that actually levels with Danny. Because, let's be honest, he can sense he's hiding a secret. And he tells him he needs to shape up at school. In the Technus episode, he makes him study and retake a test. That's far more understanding than any teacher I've met has done. Uh, he knows Danny is actually very smart, but he wants him to imply himself. Lancer, certified ally. Especially since, like, he probably definitely knows how it means to be othered. And he's already, quote, the weird teacher. I do want to also point out that Jazz is a very good ally. She basically figured out her brother's secret of being a ghost, but is waiting for when he is ready to tell her. He can tell me when he's ready. Season 1, Episode 9, those last four minutes? Oof, right in the feels. Your disappearing act worked marvelously. They've got their spirit back. They're not the only ones, Mr. Lancer. They're not the only ones. Oh my god. She tries to keep her space, but she honestly is concerned for him and really doesn't want their parents to unalive him for being a ghost. The team up in season two, episode seven, The Fenton Menace, is where she gets a major upgrade from just concerned older sister to full on ally. She both pretends not to know he's Danny Phantom and helps him save their parents. Sorry, slipped out of my hand. How's that for allyship? As you know, there's way more clips than I have time to tell, so let's just say I'll be posting them in a supercut later on. I could go on and on, but I'm sure if you're not convinced by now, you never will be. And that's the beauty of headcanons. They don't have to be perfect or exact, and you can make them your own. I will probably add more parts later, but for now, just stay cool. You've been watching Cartoon Gay Posting. This has been a Perfectly Fluid production. Go to PerfectlyFluid.com for... Trans Danny shirts and Trans Jenny stickers. Please stop by. And also, don't forget to follow my Patreon. Patrons get exclusives, free stickers every month of your choice. And you may be able to be credited in my next videos. So please, come on down, follow my Kofi, get some commissions, do what you want. Please give me money.